Hello, Sagittarius, and welcome. I'm Adriana. I'm a soul guidance coach. And today I have an intuitive and spiritual message about your growth and path this week. It will also hopefully contain the information to help you really focus to make sure your energy is moving forward in a positive direction. So let's start with your theme card. This is the overarching theme and the energy that the universe sends you. We have the Prince of Cups. So right away, I'm getting the energy and the feeling of dreaming, of either daydreaming or feeling wistful for a space or reality that's outside your current experience. And it's good to dream. This is okay. This is an okay kind of dreaming right now. It's good to dream. It's good to envision different possibilities because it helps expand your mind. It helps you clarify your desires. And this Prince of Cups is really trying to get you out of your box a bit more, out of your habitual way of thinking or being or wishing, even the things that you tend to wish about. This is asking you to really explore different kinds of wishes in different aspects of your life. So that's kind of an interesting, <laughs> that's an interesting message. Let's get a personal reading card for you. Seven of Cups. So interesting. They're going together. The Seven of Cups is talking about being lost in different kinds of choices. But it's definitely being distracted by one particular type of choice. Um, even though it seems like there's different choices, they're really all kind of the same. They're all in the water. They're all imaginary we have this one real choice here. And he's completely seduced by these particular choices. He's his energy is completely consumed in there. I'm reminded of that Greek myth about Narcissus, where the uh, someone falls in love, he's cursed by a, a nymph or something or other. He falls in love with his own reflection and he stares into the water for the rest of his life and he dies because he doesn't eat or sleep or do anything. He's so consumed with the love he's obsessed with himself. So it's that idea of obsession, but we're obsessed, we're obsessioned, <laughs> we're obsessed with one kind of wish or one kind of desire. And this Prince of Cups is saying, you know, look up, look out. There's some, there's bigger things or different things going on. These aren't the only things you really want. So pull that perspective back a bit more. Okay, let's keep going with your message. And as I pull your cards, I would love to encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you have, I'm so glad that you are continuing to be a part of a community that believes in positive growth and movement forward. So thank you also for supporting the growth and evolution of this channel itself. All right, interesting stuff going on here. Mm. All right. This is interesting and a little bit difficult to say to you, Sagittarius. We've got the four of pentacles. We have the star. We have the seven of wands. There is something that you do not want to unlock. There is something that you don't really want to bring up to the surface because to bring up to the surface would either make you feel kind of naked and vulnerable or it will make you, you'll have to accept and acknowledge something about yourself that you're not really wanting to do. It's so interesting because I feel the star card is so deep. It's like at the core of your being, it's way, way, way down in there. It's very, very much, um, it's, it's down, it's, um, it's the inside of the artichoke. It's the, it's the raw tender center of you. And you've got all these defense mechanisms around it. The seven of wands, the star, I mean, the, um, the four of pentacles. So the seven of wands is kind of fending off other people's or outside attentions in there. And the four of uh, pentacles is keeping things heavily under lock and key, not wanting this star energy to emerge. So it's like they've got her, ta-da! <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's been a while, like, you know, over 30 years or something since I've seen The Little Mermaid, but that's what this kind of reminds me of, that 
you know, all the sisters have the clamshell shut and ta-da, Ariel comes out. <laughs> anyway, but that's just the point is that what is being held in, what's being held back, that essential core of yourself, that essential, vulnerable, sensitive, tender core, um, that is something special that needs to not only come out to the surface for you, but come up to the surface in general. You need to not be afraid of letting this vulnerability out, letting this core of who you really are show. Because herein really lies the true strength. I know that she's literally not wearing any clothes. And so you might think that she's very vulnerable, but at the same time, she's very powerful. She's got, she's able to balance earth and water with water. That's powerful in itself, you know, and she's able to nourish herself. She's able to nourish the things that need to be nourished in the appropriate time. Um, when there's too much water, we can flood, right? We have a flood when it rains too much. But when there's just the right amount of water, balance is restored, healing is restored, growth happens. And that's what's available for you. But this tender part of you has been hurt or wounded or is scared to come out. And so all of your ego defenses are, are up saying, uh -uh, we're not doing that again. There is no way we're going there. And yet this star wants to emerge because she is, she represents that guiding force that really, um, I just keep saying the word sensitive and tender over and over, but it is that sensitive and tender part that talks to you that says, no, this isn't quite right. Or no, this is, this is right. Or no, this is okay. Those moments when you feel safe and okay to be yourself, that's when you're allowing more of this energy to talk to you. But because, you know, of things that have happened in the past, times where the vulnerability has come out to the surface for the wrong reason, um, because it, it either wanted something or, or wanted, mostly it wanted something or it needed something. It didn't understand that it was self-contained. That's where it's gotten into you into problems. So Sagittarius, this is about allowing yourself to let your sensitivity come out, to actually let your sensitivity be that which not only perceives the world, but navigates your way through it. I see it a lot of times as Sagittarius that you're very sensitive, but that sensitivity is hidden inside. And what sometimes comes out are, you know, blunt words or a very brash, I can do everything. It, it kind of, that centaur, that hoof, hoof in mouth, that is what comes out, but it's really hiding a very sensitive soul. But when you react and you put out the sensitivity to the world, the world gives you back the sensitivity. It pours the water back onto the water. And so you, you're putting out the sensitivity here and then you're receiving the sensitivity here. Not sensitivity as in I'm sensitive to myself and how everything is affecting me, but sensitivity into what's really going on there. What's going on with this person? How can I be very sensitive to my environment? How can I be very sensitive to what's happening over here? In putting this sensitive part of yourself out, it, this is a very interesting paradox that's happening, Sagittarius, because in putting that sensitive part of yourself out, you're actually detaching yourself. You're approaching with sensitivity, and because you're approaching with sensitivity, you're actually protected by that sensitivity. This does not really make sense, <laughs> but I can, I can feel the way it wants to work for you. The more guards and protections and armors and shields that you put up, the more that this gets diminished, the more that it can't actually protect you. And it has to, then you have to build more and more walls and post more and more psychic guards and put more protections in place. 
But understanding that the vulnerability at the core of who you are, the sensitivity at the core of who you are, it's going to start telling you things about yourself. Whether we're talking about just intuition talking to you more strongly about, you know, don't go there, don't talk to this person, do go there, do talk to this person. When you are a lot more sensitive to yourself, you're going to know exactly what to do with your outside environment and you're not going to have to protect her. So, you know, it's interesting because I was talking about the little mermaid and Disney things aside, it was actually a, it's a very sad fairy tale. If you read the original, but she learns in that fairy tale, not the Disney version in the original fairy tale, she learns about unconditional love and she is, it's, it's got a Christian undertone. She ascends into heaven because of her unconditional love for someone in giving up that's that ego's desire of wanting the prince wanting that person she gave that up and she transcends into the essence of who she really is which is unconditional love so oh <laughs> sagittarius there's a lot of concepts here so if you need clarification or you're not sure exactly where to focus um please reach out in the comments below i would also invite you to check out it's now called soul guidance with adriana.com. I have some openings for one-on-one -on -one intuitive readings, but I also have deeper guidance packages available. If you're wanting to go into shadow work or to help kind of take off these protective clothings to help get in touch with that vulnerability, um, please check those out. There's a lot of different kinds of offerings. And if there's something else that you want, it's possible to do a custom offering as well. So I look forward to seeing you next time, Sagittarius, and have a great rest of your day.